morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I decided to come out today and do an overnighter. Finally, I was uh, I was thinking I wanted to do something different and and thinking back, I've never done an overnighter just under a tarp in the winter. So I want to do that. And uh, one of the things I want to get out of the way, like now, is Grizz is not with me in this video. Um, the reason for that being, it's gonna be, it's gonna go down to minus 10-ish tonight, and I just don't have the right gear to keep him warm. Um, I kind of wanted to do like a minimalist type trip, uh, just one backpack for a winter overnighter, and like I said, it's gonna be like minus 10, so it's just not realistic, and I don't want to have to worry about him, and I don't want to have to put him through that, and uh, you know, watch him freeze through the night. So, anyways, long story short, I hope you guys <laughs> forgive me for not bringing Grizz out here, but there's very good reason for it. And uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, Grizz is my dog. He's a, he's a two-year-old Husky Lab mix, and he usually comes out with me on every single trip, so uh, I really miss him. And uh, I bet you all miss him tonight when it's dark and lonely out here, but I'll have to uh, suck it up and <laughs> not have Grizz with me. Anyways, I'm out for an overnighter. Sorry that I don't have Grizz with me, but like I said, it's for good reason. And I'm excited. I th I'd be lying to you if I if I told you I wasn't like a little bit nervous. I'm just gonna have to be a little bit more vigilant and be, be really careful. And yeah. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. First thing I gotta do is pick a spot and then I gotta get, gotta get working on firewood. I've gotta get enough firewood to cook my dinner uh, and keep me warm basically till I go to bed. Like I said, I got a lot of work to do so I better get, better get going. There's two trees right here. I think will take my tarp just fine. And this rock here, I can put my fire up against it. The one thing I wish I brought with me that I didn't bring, and I really regret it, is a little pack shovel. Um, no big deal. I'll have to dig everything out with my feet, but would have been would have been handy. Whew. Snow is really deep. <laughs> I really should have snowshoes. Um, this is fine for now. Yeah, I think this is a sweet spot. Oh man, there's a really nice piece of dead standing hardwood right there and right there. That's like a huge comfort to know that I don't have to travel too, too far in this really deep snow after already hiking out here um, to get firewood and stuff, so that's good. Something else I wanted to check before I settle in here. I do have one bar of service, so as much as I hate like showing technology and using technology I hate it I really do but uh, but it can really save you and it's important to be safe if anything were to happen I can I'm one phone call away from getting somebody out here <sighs> which is important okay get to work cool doesn't look icy under here just frozen ground so that's good Means I can put my fire there and it won't get drowned out. Um, okay. First things first, set up my tarp. Um, I brought snow pants for later tonight because I, I know I'm going to get cold later. It's going to be like minus 10. So, was, I do have long johns under my Fall Raven pants, um, and I'll also be sleeping in those, so I have to make sure I don't sweat too much. So definitely uh, layer appropriately, which I should do right now. It's really warm. For tarp, I got my AquaQuest tarp. It's the Safari. It's 10 by 10. I made a video this past summer of a new tarp shelter I wanted to try. And uh, it worked out pretty good, so maybe I should try that. And it only takes one ridge line and like pegs, um, which in this case the snow's deep enough I can make snow anchors. Yeah, I'll try it. Before I blab on about it, I'll, I'll just try it. Oh, 
On this side of the tarp, I always do just a quick release knot. Just pop that out. I'm bringing a shovel next time. This is dumb. <laughs> Kind of digging out like a little snow cave situation. So I can be down in and I'll be protected from all the wind. I'm excited, it's gonna be cool. more than enough space there. I'm gonna do snow anchors. Just basically you put a stick Dig out a spot, put the stick down around your, your line. And I you can like wrap it around the stick, but I like to leave it adjustable so I can tighten it if I want. Um, stick the stick way down in there, wherever you think you might want. Let's see if we get that angle right. I think that should do. You can adjust it if we need to. Cover it with snow and basically pack it down, let it center. And then later I'll be able to tighten this up and it'll be anchored down pretty pretty good. Even that, it's not even budging it and it hasn't even centered yet, so yeah, that's a snow anchor. Very handy when the snow is deep and the ground is frozen. Looking cozy. So, what I'm gonna do right now, before I tighten the tarp, oh, let's turn this up. So before I make it all nice and taut and pretty, I'm gonna let the snow anchors set, and then uh, I'll give it like probably an hour while I collect wood and stuff. If I just um, pull those corners tight, then it should be good. Check out that cozy little home. That looks awesome. I'm gonna fill in snow there so I can be protected from the wind. Maybe even put a bunch, like a snow wall there. Oh man, that looks awesome. Oh, there's tons of room under here. Yeah, I can even, uh, just for extra protection in case it snows tonight, I can dig out more back there. And uh, maybe I'll do that now. Should start collecting wood soon though. The thing is, the wind is coming from that direction. <sighs> so hopefully that changes. Shouldn't affect my fire though. If the wind comes through here, um, that's the best place to have your fire. It doesn't swirl. Um, if the wind comes at you or that way, the smoke from the fire will will stir like right inside the tent. I can confirm that because <laughs> I've done it <laughs> and it's. It's terrible to have your fire or your smoke circle inside your tent or your tarp. I gotta finally spend the money 
I wanted a titanium water bottle. Something a little more hardy, something I can put hot water in at night and sleep with and not think that it's, you know, and it not be plastic. I would always put hot water in my Nalgene, but I don't know, it just doesn't feel right putting boiling hot water in a plastic container. But this is a little smaller. It's only 800 mils instead of a whole liter, but there's tons of fresh snow around. I don't think I'll have a problem keeping up with water. Oh, I love this. Look how cozy that is. Oh, there we go. Okay. For firewood harvesting, I chose my Bear Essentials Bucksaw. Man, I love this thing. I don't know what it is, just like the angle of how it all goes together. Um, but I find it just does a really great job of slicing through firewood. Um, some of them I find you need a lot of downward pressure. This one I find just does all the work by itself a little more easily. I mean, I know that they all kind of do that to a certain extent, but I don't know, it just feels like this one does it better. All right, buck saw's ready to rock. And I also brought uh, my Husqvarna hatchet. Normally I would bring a full ax out here, like a full, well, full ax, a forest ax, 26 inch handle. Um, this one I think is 18 inch handle. Um, the reason I didn't bring my 26 inch Husqvarna is because it needs a lot of work on the on the edge. I brought it camping with friends this past summer and someone just like buried it into the ground. Uh, I guess they didn't know much about axes and uh, and it got some really bad dings in it so I've been working away at it but they really... <laughs> and then they kept using it so it made the burrs even worse which um, which made it really really bad and a really big deal to kind of fix so I've been working it away at it but it's taking a lot of time. This guy right here very very dead standing. That's really nice. It's pretty gnarly all here so I think I'm gonna cut up here. Uh, it's also closer to comfortable height. Oh what should I do? My camp is literally right there. I think I'll just try and cut this up here. There's like a stand right there. It's much easier to saw with it at this height. Oh, that's nice. Super dry, seasoned. I love this saw. It's such a workhorse. Nice. Um, a lot of people like silky saws too. I do have a silky saw. Every time I use this thing, people are like, get a silky saw, it's so much easier. Um, it's actually not, and a silky saw, you have to saw like, like this, it always hurts my wrist. It's a terrible position for your wrist. Unless you can put two hands on it, it's like not ideal in my opinion. It's great for two-handed work or I don't know. It has its place. But I like this this saw. Uh... Use my same stand again. It's right here. Oh, man. That's great. 
great. <laughs> Very dense. Oh my. Cutting some of these longer, cutting some of them short so I don't have to, uh, um, so it's easier to split them. And I'll cut some of them long, and those are the ones I'll put later on when I just want to stay warm. And uh, they'll burn for a long time, and I don't have to cut as much. So, that's the plan. Um, I'm just going to turn off the camera while I do this, chop all this up, and then I'm going to go collect some... Uh, birch bark and uh, some twigs and stuff to get the fire going. There we go. It's three o'clock right now, so I've got about two hours of daylight. Anyways, should be plenty of time to get fire, get enough firewood, get my bed set up before dark, and uh, start cooking dinner. Whew. Getting chilled. I'm gonna keep working. Nice and sunny. Nice. Oh, oh yes. Nice. Should have no trouble splitting on firewood. Nice and dry like that. Hopefully it's dry. You're not frozen. Hold on the hands, but I have better grip. <sighs> Typically, good grip is something you want to have when you're working with an axe. more than enough split up to get my fire going pretty good here. Um, so I think I should do that so I have somewhere to warm up my hands. This is a nice find. More papery. The, the bark I took from that other big dead birch was really thick, which is good to have too. This one's all nice and thin and papery. And as you can see, it has no top. It's very dead. So that's a good find did bring some camera batteries. I brought a uh, ground tarp. Keeping all of my stuff off the ground, so I think, I'll, I think I'll set that up so I can put my stuff on it. I'm getting chilled. The uh, the wind. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the wind really picked up, and I can feel the temperature dropped. And I also stopped moving, and I sweat a little bit earlier. So I'm gonna have to get a fire going and try to warm up a bit, and uh, maybe even go for go for a little hike or something just to warm up. Cause. Uh, Feeling chilled. Having fun though. It's a lot of work. I haven't stopped since I got here and I'm a little bit hungry. 
Um, but I really, really just need to get a fire going right now, I think. Yeah. Some nice dry twigs here. My knees are really cold sitting on them. That's such a bad idea. Ooh, it's windy. Ooh, it's cold. Oh. I'm quite cold. I have good prep. When you're doing a fire in the cold like this. Because uh, it sucks to start over when you don't have enough prep work done. Pretty generous amount of birch bark. Immediately, I can feel the heat, like really well. I'm gonna sit here for a minute and uh, get some composure. Oh, I'm hungry. wind just picked up again. This uh, snow wall really helps. Getting a little hungry. I uh, brought some beef jerky. So these are my beeswax wraps that I make. And uh, inside that, got my beef jerky. It's made locally. And uh, it's the best beef jerky I've ever had. It's so good. Mm. It's good. Yeah. Sleeping bag. This is a minus 12 sleeping bag. I'm uh, <laughs> certainly pushing the limits of it tonight. I'll have to check again what it's gonna get down to. I think I'll be okay. The uh, putting hot water in a water bottle, like, just and then in your sleeping bag with you to sleep, oh my goodness, does it ever help. It makes such a big difference, it's crazy. 
when I started doing that, it was like I could sleep in cold weather without worrying about it. Okay. Let that sleeping bag fluff out. Oh, that looks great. Whoa! <laughs> I wonder if I shouldn't have my head on this side. I think I will. Uh, no, that's fine there, probably. And now, I pull it nice and close. Not so close that it'll get burned, but... Close enough to the fire I can sit on it and cook and stuff. Camping is a lot of work, because I mentioned that. It's a lot of work. Oh. Oh, it's so cozy in here. <laughs> Birch bark. Oh, my butt's wet again. I keep putting my feet on my butt. Fire's looking real good. <sighs> real good. I still need more firewood. Anyways, I should either get moving or warm up my toes. My toes are really cold. This is a really nice bed of coals to cook on later. And I gotta set up my bed really bad. Firewood first though, because that bed I can do with a headlamp. Firewood is a little bit more difficult. Two good ones. A ways away from camp. Oh. That deep snow. It's very hard to walk through without snowshoes. Oh yeah, that's good. Just so you know, I realize this is gonna pinch the blade halfway through. It's easier to start it up at this height for me and then just lift it up for the last couple strokes. Uh, then saw the whole thing on the ground. <laughs> Definitely have to hold it up at the end so it doesn't pinch. But this is great. Well, this is pretty
pretty much the gist of winter camping. Firewood, firewood, and more firewood. The, uh, the wind died right down. It's beautiful out now. Okay, now that I feel a lot warmer since the wind died, and um, I've, I'm more dry, and I wiggled my toes for like ever to try to warm them up, and uh, all of that worked. Um, I dried off my pants and my, my knees and my butt <laughs> um, by the fire, and my gloves are all dry. Everything's nice and dry and warm now, so um, what a big difference it makes. <laughs> um, anyways. So my point is now that I now that I feel nice and warm, it's easier to like get away from the fire. Um, I'm gonna set up my bedding and stuff for the night. I need to let my um, my sleeping bag fluff out, and then uh, after that, I'm gonna start dinner. A little tip that uh, that I discovered, I guess, for myself. Um, I used to try all kinds of like those mitts you can buy. They're just synthetic on the outside. Um, and then a couple of years ago, I found these, um, they're just like a split leather, cheap $10 mitts with like a fake Sherpa lining inside. And what I do is I just put uh, cheap, those cheap little gloves, fingered gloves, uh, on, and then inside my mitts. So it's a nice layering system. And uh, you have your, your dexterity when you need it, but if it's cold out, you don't want to just be barehanded. And it's like super warm to have them layered up like this when you're doing other tasks, like collecting firewood or moving hot stuff around, moving the fire around, stuff like that. So um, it's been a system I've been using for probably two years. And since my last pair of gloves like this, um, I burnt them. Uh, I ordered a pair that, uh, you, if you guys have been watching my videos lately, I've been using a pair of, uh, um, like actual leather gloves that was sent to me by that were sent to me by a subscriber. He he makes them and sells them. I uh, actually ordered a pair of mitts from him, and I bought these just because I needed them tonight. And I'll also use them around the house and stuff. Um, so and they're great. If I go snowmobiling and stuff, I'll I'll bring these. Anyways, I ordered a nice pair of mitts as well for my for my trips, and I'll probably do the same leather uh, layering system. Um, but they're just higher quality mitts than these are. But again, these will have their uses, so. All right, gotta set up my bed. Probably near frozen in this thing. Okay, fire steel in the front. Brought my air mattress, Thermarest Neo Air X Therm, I should say. And this thing I've slept on in minus 15, and I did not lose any heat out from under me. Really great pad. Really great. And it comes with a pump sack, so you're not blowing hot air into it. That condenses and makes it cold throughout the night. Great. This is a minus 12 sleeping bag. I'm uh, <laughs> certainly pushing the limits of it tonight. I'll have to check again what it's going to get down to. I think I'll be okay. The uh, putting hot water in a water bottle, like, just and then in your sleeping bag with you to sleep, oh my goodness, does it ever help. It makes such a big difference. It's crazy. When I started doing that, it was like I could sleep in cold weather without worrying about it. Stoke up this fire. Ah! That's better. And then uh, I gotta boil some snow.
Okay. Got that. Now. Shoot, I didn't think about this. Um, so in my cook kit here, I've got some broccoli. Oh, my camera's gonna die. Ugh, I'm going through batteries like crazy. It's so cold. Um, Alright, I'll change the battery and then I'll show you guys. In my cook kit, I've got my Tokes uh, 750 milliliter titanium pot. And in there I got broccoli, like I said. I got a sausage. I'm going to cook that on the coals, I think. Which I should probably start soon, actually. Um, in this tin, I just have some instant coffee. In my beeswax wrap, I have a chunk of cheese. Um, some of it is dabbed with dinner, and the other little bit is like a little cube um, that I'm going to have right before bed. Uh, Les Stroud actually said that um, eating a piece of like cheddar cheese before, before bed keeps you warm. So I'm going to try it. Can't hurt. I guess all the saturated fat helps your body stay warm. And I have some rice. Again, in a plastic bag. Don't like it, but that's what it is. I've got oatmeal for the morning. I've got an avocado to have with with dinner. And a cliff bar that I thought I might need today, but instead I'll probably eat it with my oatmeal in the morning. Although I won't need much. I don't eat a lot in the mornings. And uh, and then just some, some steak spice. I might, might throw on the sausage. Might not. So here's the... Broccoli ready to go. I put some water in the bottom there. It's ready to go on the fire. Yeah. There we go. There we go. My broccoli is pretty close to done too. Some steak spice in there. Ooh, that's a lot. Too much. Time. Nothing snobby tonight for beer, just good old classic Canadian. Good. Okay, you guys. Been sitting here for a while. Just uh, boiling up snow. This should be the last time I need to fill it. It takes forever to boil up snow. Um, especially this kind of snow. It's all granular and really fluffy. So there's a lot of air in it. So. You pack that thing it only gives you like, like that much um, so you gotta fill it up quite a few times before you actually get any decent amount of water getting a little later and I'm still feeling pretty warm which is good um, I think all I'll need tonight is my base layer so I'll just take my pants off stay in my long johns and I should be warm enough in that with my water bottle um, as well. I think I'll be plenty warm. I don't know if it's going to get as cold as it's supposed to tonight. I think I'll be fine. And the wind died right down. It's like dead still out there. It's crazy. Just finishing up my beer. I've been nursing it for a whole while. It's 
been a good day. I'm happy I did this. Happy I did this for sure. Just about to eat some beef jerky and the uh, the cheese. Maybe I'll eat that with you, and then right after that, I'm just gonna go to bed. Pretty pleased with my little shelter here. Got it all tucked away. I should show ya. I uh, tucked it all back th back in there. So even if it snows, it sh I shouldn't have any snow on me. Um, this little nook, I've got my my beef jerky that's ready to eat. My food bag, I'm gonna go hang um, away from my camp. I put a little snow barrier right here to keep my uh, my sleeping pad from sliding around. I think that'll do great. There's nothing worse than trying to sleep and you feel like you're sliding. It's terrible. It's just the worst feeling ever when you're half asleep and trying to stay warm and don't want to get out. <laughs> so figured I'd tackle that before I went to bed. Yeah, pretty much ready for bed here. Wow, I just filmed myself <laughs> talking and eating, finishing off my beef jerky and my uh, cheese and uh, and my camera went black. Black. <laughs> camera screen went black. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? I ever hit record. <laughs> Rookie mistake. What I was saying is, I'm nearly done my beef jerky and my. My, um. Cheese. Water's just finally all boiled up. Pour that in my bottle. And then, uh. Go pee. And go to bed. Really good snack. Really glad I bought it. Brought it out. Can't even talk. I'm tired. Alright. Gonna finish this. And then I'll pop the camera back on when I'm. I pour the water in my cup and go to bed. Oh, I just did it again. So. You guys completely missed me pouring the water into my titanium. I'll just show you. It's nice and hot. It's really hot. And uh, it doesn't leak. So that's quite important. Yeah, I'm excited to snuggle with that tonight. Alright. I'm ready for bed. My uh, water bottle is really warm, <laughs> so that should keep me warm for most of the night, if not all of the night. Put my tuca in a little bit. Thanks for watching up till now, guys, and I'll, uh, if all goes well, I'll see you in the morning. Good night. morning. I'm so foggy. There we go. Oh. It's coffee time. Here's a quick tip. Keep your pants inside your sleeping bag at night. Much easier to put on in the morning when they're warm. Boots are a little cold. I'll admit, I was a little bit cold last night. Um, but the water bottle trick really, really helps. In any spots that are cold, you just put the water bottle there. And uh, you just kind of rotate it. You don't really get much sleep when it's cold, but here and there, you get some. Oh. Still warm. I'm gonna use it for coffee.
Still some steam going off of that. That was hot. <laughs> I got it all. It all shrunk right there from the heat just now. and oatmeal. Oh, yeah. We are gonna do it the lazy way this morning and put the water right in the oatmeal packet. a little watery. <laughs> it just needs to sit longer. It's that type of oatmeal where it's not like instant. It's getting there. So while I should be packing up because my fire is going out and I'm going to need to keep my Hands warm while I pack up. I've just been kind of lazy and uh, just laying here. Really cozy. So cozy. Didn't end up using my snow pants at all. That's really good. home. Buxa was awesome on this trip. Love this thing. It's so beautiful. It's nice looking and it's a workhorse. Little tip for staying organized. This is my Thermomest bag. I always throw all the other like stuff sacks and stuff in into one just so that they don't get lost and dirty and disorganized, dropped everywhere.
Oh, I feel on my hands. I doubt this is going to fit back in his bag. <laughs> it's all frozen. That is cold on the hands. It's not going to look pretty. Oh boy. <laughs> well. <sighs> well, I'm packed up. And I feel pretty accomplished. I'm, I'm glad that I was able to come out and do this. And, uh... Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, sorry there's no Grizz, but uh, maybe I'll put a little clip of Grizz here at the end. Uh, just to give you guys your Grizz fix. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button if this is something you like. And uh, stay tuned because we're going on a we're going on a hot tent trip uh, this coming week. So stay tuned for that video and yeah. I'll see you guys then.